Good morning, Messiah. Um, stand and sing Live Like That with us. Sometimes I think, what will people say of me when I'm only just a memory, when I'm home where my soul belongs? Was I loved when no one else would show up? Was I Jesus to the least of us? Was my worship more than just a song? we want to live. We want to be love. We want to show that love to you in worship today. Um, let us worship with reckless abandon, never holding back. In your name we pray. Amen. Faithfulness, faithfulness. 
yet. He has encountered a flat tire on the way back to Columbus from the cottage. So we need to pray that um, he's safe and that he gets back quickly um, so that he can worship with us at some point today. Um, today is Commitment Sunday, so um, I pray that we all have confidence that he won't fail us. Um, so pray the rest of the service, make your commitment, and we'll bring that to the altar um, later today. So um, let's sing one more. I am not who I once was, defined by all the things I've done. Afraid my shame would be exposed. Afraid of really being known. Then you gave my heart a home. So I walked out of the darkness and into the light. From fear of shame into the dope of light. Mercy called my name and made a way to fly. Out of the 
with your neighbor don't feel free to leave your pew hug even kiss if you want peace be with you come forward come on up for a children's message and actually we're gonna do something a little different you guys can come all the way up what and if you want to just have a seat all along here so you can see me we're gonna have it up here today cuz I like to switch things up <gasps> Look at you guys. You look awesome today. Do you feel awesome? Yeah, maybe. Oh, I see some are like, who's tired? Yeah, me too. I'm really tired. Who's feeling awesome? Maybe. Okay. Who's feeling down? Anybody feeling down? It's okay if you are. Anybody feeling bouncy? Whatever you think it means. Yeah? All right. Uh, who's feeling talkative? Who's feeling like you hope I don't ask you anything else? <laughs> there you go. Good morning! Good morning! Oh, that was awesome. Let's try one more time. Good morning! today. I am so glad you're here with us this morning. How many of you like to get gifts? Yeah? How many of you like to give gifts? Maybe. Maybe you like the getting more than the giving. What kind of gifts have you ever given? What have you given? Yeah? Christmas presents? Birthday presents? A what? Robot. A robot. Anything else? How many of you like to draw pictures and give them away? Yeah? How many of you have ever made a card for your mom or your dad or your grandma? Yeah? How many of you have ever made something, you know, something really fun or crazy or you don't even know what it was, but you made it? Yeah? 
Yeah, so we can give gifts and we can have just as little things that we can make that we give. Why do you think you gave them? Like what made you want to give something away to someone? Olivia? Maybe because you're just feeling generous. You're feeling generous? Yeah, what else? That's an awesome answer. Happy, happy? you're feeling happy? Like you just like giving? Yeah, we might want to tell someone we love them, right? Yeah, we love them, and so we want to give to them. You know, that's why we worship. That's why we come here on Sunday mornings to worship. That's why we sing. That's why we give in the offering plate. That's why we pass the peace among everyone here. It's because we want to give to God because we say, God, I love you so much. Can you say I love you so much? Yeah, I love you so much, God, that I want to give something back to you. You could even draw your picture to God, right? And you could put that in the offering plate and say, God, that's for you. I made you a picture, and I want you to have that. We give. We give of our time. We give of whatever we have, our change in our pocket. We give our voices, right? That's why we sing. Because the same reason why we might give a gift to mom and dad, why we might give a gift to our friend, is the same thing we want to do for God. Because God loves us so much, and we want to show that love back. Okay? So do you think we can give God a prayer today? You think we can talk to God and give that gift today? Yeah? Can you look for ways this week where you can give to God, maybe by helping someone or praying yourself or singing a song or drawing a picture? You think you can look for ways this week? You'll help everyone in your family. Your family just heard me say that, so you better, yeah. All right, let's pray. Can you put your hands together? All right. Repeat after me. God, we love you. Thank you for all you have done. Help us to love others. Amen. Thank you guys. You can uh, head on out with Miss Betsy to Sunday school. And as they head out, we um, will be hearing a good gift of song from our women of song.
stand for the Holy Gospel. The Holy Gospel according to Mark. While he was at Bethany in the house of Simon the leper, as he sat at the table, a woman came with an alabaster jar a very costly ointment of nard, and she broke open the jar and poured the ointment on his head. But some were there who said to one another in anger, why was the ointment wasted in this way? For this ointment could have been sold for more than 300 denarii and the money given to the poor. And they scolded her. But Jesus said, let her alone. Why do you trouble her? She has performed a good service for me. For you always have the poor with you, and you can show kindness to them whenever you wish. But you will not always have me. She has done what she could. She has anointed my body beforehand for its burial. Truly I tell you, wherever the good news is proclaim, proclaimed in the whole world, what she has done will be told in remembrance of her. The Gospel of the Lord. You may be seated. Please pray with me. God, we thank you that we are here this morning, that you have brought us here. Lord, let us be hearers of your word. Help us to know and see you in our lives and to give you thanks. In your name we pray. Amen. In my last year of seminary, I took a class that was uh, to, meant to look at Christianity in the whole world, so thinking of the global church. And we took advantage of the fact that being uh, centered in Chicago, the city is kind of becomes a microcosm of that global world with so many different churches and different people. So we went, to, we went and visited churches, um, specifically churches made up of immigrants. Um, so we went to a church that had a mostly Indian congregation and whose liturgy was similar to what they had in India and, and churches that were filled up with West African or East African and churches filled up with Middle Eastern immigrants and refugees. And we went to one church where the entire service was spoken in Aramaic, which was really cool since it's the language of Jesus, right? To sit there and wonder at the fact that you're in worship hearing words Jesus might have heard. Now, you don't understand anything being said. But still, you could be a part of worship, I found. That was the gift of all these churches, many of the services that weren't in English, that I could still be a part of worship. I could use my eyes to look around and watch and, and drink in what was going on. I could, could be a part of people sitting next to me and greeted by them. I could take communion, be a part of this worship. At this one church that I'm talking about, what I remember from that moment was when everyone left and exited the congregation and it was just our class standing there talking with the pastor, something caught the corner of my eye. I looked over and saw midway through the sanctuary a man who had not yet gotten up. Everyone had left, but he was still seated where he was. And he was just, his face just upturned, looking towards the front of the sanctuary. And I realized he was looking right into the face of Jesus on the cross where he hung at the front of the church. I kind of stood there in awe for a second, drawn into this moment. That was a very holy moment, right? A moment where it felt like I really shouldn't, you know, be staring or watching. But I saw him just sitting there looking up. And I could see such devotion, such worship. 
where he didn't care that everyone had left and he didn't care that there were these seminarians who were too loud, talking away, asking questions, that he simply just sat and stared up at this representation of his Savior. I realized I was watching a man who had encountered Christ, who'd encountered the love of Christ, that who had known that love so poured out to him that all he could do in that moment was sit there, sit and look in love and devotion. It was beautiful. There is something equally beautiful about the woman who pours oil over Jesus' head. Amen? Every time I read this scripture, every time I get to the place where it says, and everywhere the good news is told, she will be remembered, it catches the back of my throat. This holy moment with Jesus, because it's an act of worship without restraint, without worries about what's going on around. It's an act of worship and devotion. We don't know anything about this woman in Mark. We don't know if she has had a conversation with Jesus, if they've encountered each other directly before, or if she's simply been one of the many in the crowds who have followed him from place to place to place. But we know what we've heard in Mark before we get to this place, that he's been proclaiming the kingdom of God, that the kingdom of God is here, is at hand, and that that kingdom includes her, unnamed woman that she is. It includes her in a way that I'm guessing no one had quite included her before. I mean, we even see it at the beginning of this passage because it starts with Jesus was at the home of the Simon the leper, which means Jesus was already where he wasn't supposed to be. Amen? I mean, this is already in the house of an outcast, the house of those, one who is seen as unclean, the house of someone Jesus wasn't supposed to be hanging with. And here in this place, she finds him, and she's seen the miracles and the healings and the love over and over in Jesus' ministry. And she even knows where that love will lead. Jesus tells us this, that she gets it. She understands. She understands what the disciples don't get. They are pretty hard-headed. They have heard it over and over, but they still don't understand. And she does. That this love of Jesus is so extravagant, so grand, so much, so sacrificial, that it will lead to the cross. We don't see specifically in detail what might have led her to this moment of pouring out this oil, but all we know is her response. That whatever she felt, whatever she saw, whatever she encountered, it led to her devotion. Like that man sitting in the church, I had no idea what had brought him to that place, but I could just see, I could see how it had changed him and led him to worship. Extravagant love poured back out, given without restraint. You can stop and think about this for your life. How has God's love been poured out to you extravagantly? Sometimes there are places and moments in our life where it is so hard to see and know and feel God's love. Amen? 
I mean, we all know those places where it feels like we are in darkness and rejection and then suddenly the light comes and smack upside the head. We experience God's love in overwhelming, abundant ways. And it comes again and again. And I don't know about y'all, but when that smack upside the head comes, my eyes fill up with tears. I'm a crier. And I find myself just needing to worship. Thank you, Lord, for your love poured out. What other response do I have to give but to worship? for all that God has given to us, for all that God, Christ has given for all of us, for all the Spirit has moved in our lives, we worship. We give our voices in song, as I told our kids, whether we are off-key or not. Pastor Carl usually is. We give it. We give our voices in songs. We give our tears if they come. We give our prayers in hope. Lord, this is what I'm struggling with. This is what I'm dealing with. This is what I'm afraid of. This is what I'm mad about. God, here, take it. We give our tithes and our offerings in thanks for all that God has given us because it all belongs to God. We give to others in forgiveness, in love, in healing because we already know. We know about being forgiven, amen? We know about being loved, amen? We know about being healed. And so we give from that cup. We worship. And our lives become one of worship. Because everything that we are and all of who we are and everything that we have is God's. Is the Lord's. Our cup runneth over and we give. We're doing our financial commitments today. I know y'all are like, I, I figured that was going to come in the sermon somehow. But we're giving these today. And often we talk about them in terms of practice, which it is, like a discipline. And other times we talk about it as living in generosity, which it is. And we'll talk about it in terms of supporting the mission of the church, which it is. But first and foremost, it is an act of worship. It is an act of love. Lord, you have given to me, and I give back. Lord, you are the center of my life, the center of my devotion, and even my money belongs to you. Lord, all that I am and all that I have is yours. I return your extravagant love with extravagant love. And in that worship, we become the woman who breaks open the expensive jar of oil and serves Christ, who does it even when there are naysayers around her. And Jesus is clear. You know, Jesus' life has been for the poor, but he will not let that be used to scold this woman. For the disciples around her to get embarrassed by her display of devotion. Or try to compete with her about who is going to win more points of discipleship. And we can hear our own competitions, right? Like how we get, amen? Yeah, we get 
how we rationalize or how we hear from others, maybe naysayers who say, you give how much? Is that financially wise? Or who look and wonder or think or, or maybe our own naysaying where we, we get embarrassed by what we have or that we feel like we don't have enough to give, or that maybe we've gotten angry at the church, or, or we're not happy with the budget, or, or and whatever it is that we get. Or maybe there are other things we want to spend those resources on. But Jesus says that's all beside the point. This is in service to him. This is a part of our worship. Break open the jar and be extravagant. This is our worship. You know, as I was telling the kids about the kind of gifts they do, right? I was thinking this, this, with this sermon about the kind of gifts I receive from them. It is not uncommon for pictures to show up on my door just randomly. Drawings from kids in our service who probably got bored in the midst of service. Beautiful pictures that I now have hanging on my wall, some that are, are meant to look like me and some that I'm not quite sure what they're meant to look like. But just a couple weeks ago, I got two index cards on my door from Ava and Sophia, just drawn, just with my name, to Pastor Liz from Ava, to Pastor Liz from Sophia. And it really struck me that I, I realized they probably only had index cards and a pencil, right? That's all they had. They may have just found them. Maybe they were waiting for mom as she did praise band rehearsal, right? And all they did was they found index cards and a pencil, and they decided to draw me something. Why? Because their cup overflowed. Love, joy, peace, things they wanted to share. And that is true for all of us. Our cups are overflowing. And some days it may feel like all we've got is an index card and a pencil, but yet it is overflowing and we give. We give in love. Our cups are overflowing here at Messiah. Amen? Even in the midst of our fears or anxieties or our struggles or our pain or our grief, they are still being filled up with God's love and mercy and grace. And there is more. There is always more. The Spirit always has more to give us. We are not limited. So in all that we do, who we are, let us be the woman who breaks open the jar. Let us worship. Let us raise our voices. Let us pray for one another. Ask each other, how are you doing? How can I pray for you? Let us reach out for what Christ is giving to us so that we may give in return. Let us worship. Amen? Let us worship. Let us love the Lord our God, who first, who first loved us. Amen. We're going to join together, giving our voices in song, even if it's off key. Amen. We're going to give our voices in songs. And y'all, I know it's uncomfortable, but you could even sway if you want to give a little movement too. Give a little hand raise. Carol's got my back. <laughs> We're also going to give of our commitments. And know that it's not about proving something. It really
really isn't. It's the same invitation as that voice. It's the same invitation of your prayers. It's just a commitment to God. God, this is what I'm giving. You have given me so much. And whether you just got $10 this year, and all you can give is $1 out of that 10, it is the same extravagant gift as someone with 100000 this year who gives 10000 It is all our love. It is our love. It is our worship. So as we lift our voices in song, I invite you to come and drop your commitments in the basket. Our offering plates are also on the side, and as you come forward, you can put your offerings and tithes that you've brought with you today in those plates. But come and worship. Come without restraint. Don't worry. Release. God will meet you where you are. Come and let us sing. God, all that we are, all of who we are, is yours. You have loved us into creation from the very beginning. And we give you thanks. We give you praise. God, fill our hearts, fill our lives with that love. If any of us have walked in uncertain of that love, remind us of it now. And then take our lives, take our minds, take our wills, 
and make them truly yours. Shaped by that love. God, we thank you for all you have given us. Our time, our talents, our resources. Bless these commitments we've made this morning. Bless these promises we've made to you. Trusting that you provide. Trusting in each next step you give us. May they be of service to you. God, we lift up our world, a world you call to oneness, to unity. Where there is division, where there is pain, where there is struggle and hurt, anger and violence, be a healer, Lord. Send us out to be yours, your light, your truth, your love. We pray for those who are struggling with depression or grief this morning. Those are hurting in addiction and illness. We lift up Kimberly Beery, Meg Ridler, Christine Ickes, Susan Franklin, Lauren Blake, Holly Hessler, Julie Searles, Karen Butler, Amanda Patterson, Chris Husky, Jennifer Solt, Ethel Cochran, Jeff Campbell, Kay Ormy, Norma Schweikert, Marley Jones, Paul Newell, Madison Epperly, Andrew Bailey, and others we name in this moment. God, you so love the world that you gave your only son. And so we remember and honor and lift up that love today. And we remember that in the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, broke it, gave thanks, gave it to his disciples saying, take and eat, this is my body. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, blessed it, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Holy Spirit, draw us together as your people. Make us your people. And teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. All are welcome to join in this meal. You may be seated as we have our assistants come up, um, and, then, and then all are welcome, all are invited. The body of Christ given for you.
Now may the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in God's grace. Let us pray. God, strengthened by this meal, strengthened by your love, send us out to be makers of your peace, doers of your mission and your vision. Let us be your love. In your name we pray. Amen. Not too many announcements. You can check out your bulletin board for ways to get involved with uh, places like Heart or Joseph's Coat or other things going on. Um, as always, come on out for Messiah Night. We have a good meal, uh, great uh, classes and groups going on for all ages. So come on out for that. Uh, next Sunday is Scout Sunday. So if you uh, got a scout in your family, uh, have them come on out. This is uh, boys and girls. So come and join on that Sunday as we just kind of celebrate and lift up the good acts of service they do um, through those organizations. And, and for um, the groups that meet here at, at Messiah, Messiah is a big place all week long for our scouts. So uh, check out the other things in your bulletin board. And with that, I invite you to stand for our benediction. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you God's peace. Amen. Let us sing.